Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pink Hollybush Designs where we talk all things sewing and smocking. Today we are talking smocking and I have 10 tips for you on how to perfect your picture smocking. Okay, first up, what is picture smocking? Well, essentially it's where you take the cable stitch and you mirror image them to create a solid swath of color and therefore a picture. So let me show you. Um, Halloween's almost coming and here is an adorable honey that was smocked by my friend Kelly. And you can see she just did a beautiful design smocking these fun little witches and pumpkins and spiders and all wonderful things for Halloween. So how do you do that and have it turned out as beautiful as she did? So picture smocking has kind of a reputation for being a little bit difficult. Well, why and then how do we overcome that? Well, the first reason it's thought for being a little bit difficult is because you're trying to get that solid swath of color with no background um, poking through or showing through. Now, when you're doing geometric smocking, it's, it's kind of like sewing a fitted garment as compared to sewing a loose tunic. You just have a lot more um, give for error <laughs> that doesn't really show up. And with picture smocking, where you really want that solid swath of color, there's just not as much room for goofs. <laughs> but there are ways to kind of combat it and help yourself. So let's dive into my 10 tips. Okay, first tip number one, you wanna choose the correct base of fabric. To get a great result with picture smocking, you really need um, a fabric that's going to give you nice plump pleats and you need those pleats close to together much closer than you do in geometric where it kind of you can have them spread a little bit more apart or have them tighter together and it really doesn't make as much of a difference and picture smocking it really does so my recommended fabrics are 100% um, cotton broadcloth imperial broadcloth or Kona cotton now of those three, Kona cotton is my favorite. I just find that it gives a little bit plumper pleats and it also hides the back smocking um, better. Now, back smocking, if you're not familiar with what that term is, is that you have to, if we look at um, Kelly's dress again, in the negative space here to hold the pleats together, you actually have to smock on the back of the big piece of fabric. And you don't want to see that showing through onto the right side. And um, if you have a thinner fabric, it will show through. In fact, there are whole designs based on back smocking. That's for another video and another discussion. So the Kona cotton, as I said, will hide that back smocking better. The problem is the Kona cotton only comes in a 45 inch width fabric. If you need, the wider width because you're smocking for an older child. The imperial broadcloth and the 100% co um, cotton broadcloth both come in 60 inch widths and that would be a reason why you would want to choose those options. Um, at Pink Hollybush, I pre-pleat and sell the um, broadcloth inserts. There are that 60 inch width and I, for the ornament strips, I use the Kona cotton and um, sell them at the 40, they're the 45 inches. So both are available. And of course, I will link to both of those down below. Okay, so we've covered tip number one is pick the correct base fabric for the smocking. Tip number two is use the needle that allows that floss to lie, all the strands lie side by side. In other words, you need a big enough needle that's going to create a big enough hole for the, the um, floss to lie side by side, and also has a big enough eye for the floss to lie side by side. So 
what size, what needles do that for you. Well, typically in smocking, we use a number seven darner needle um, for geometric smocking. And you can also use that needle for picture smocking. But if you um, are having trouble with the thread squishing up, or if you're using more strands, which I will get to in a minute, then you want to go a little bit bigger with your needle. So try a number five or a number three darner. You also can try a number 18 or a number 22 chenille needle. Both of those will make an even bigger hole for um, the floss. Okay, tip number three, use um, the number of strands of floss that's going to give you the coverage that you need to get that nice full plump smocking cable stitch. All right, typically what you hear is that we use three strands of floss for geometric and four strands for picture smocking, but that is not carved in stone. If you need more strands to get a good coverage, use more strands, um, especially some colors are known for being a little bit thinner and not as plump as others. For example, white, it is known. It, it just tends to be a little bit thinner. I don't know if the dye affects it, the, the lack of dye affects it, but um, it, it just is harder to get as good a coverage as white as with some other colors. So it is fine to use five strands or even six if that's what you need to get a good stitch. Now, one caveat if you are using additional strands is make sure you're not goofing up your design by um, throwing off the vertical placement of it. So if you have, um, if your design has four um, rows of cable between the pleating threads, are you still able to fit those rows um, if you're using five or six strands or is it throwing you off vertically? So that would just be one thing you want to um, be mindful of. Okay, talking, speaking about floss, tip number four is always strip and squeak your floss. Now what is stripping and squeaking? Well, floss comes in six strands. You want to always separate each um, individual strand out them, recombine them, and re-thread your needle. That is the stripping part that will give you better coverage. The squeaking part is that you want to smooth out your floss. So the way you do that is just take a little piece of craft felt, the cheap stuff you buy at the craft store, get it wet, wring it out so it's damp. After you've put your um, your floss together in the needle, just run your piece of craft floss, craft felt along the floss. This will smooth it out and then you'll get nice coverage when you start smocking. Now the reason that's called squeaking is if you really pull and do it hard, which you don't need to do, but if you do it that way, you will hear a squeak. <laughs> um, I tend not to get it to squeak. I just gently rub it along the, um, the floss and it smooths everything out and I get great coverage. Okay, tip number five is take a deeper bite when you stitch. And what I mean by that is typically in geometric smocking, um, you are going through about one third third down the pleat, right? So you're, you're smocking, you're doing your stitches on top of those pleats and you're, you're smocking at about a depth of one third down the pleat. With picture smocking, you want to go a little bit deeper to get even better coverage. So you want to actually go one half to two thirds down that pleat towards the bottom of the valley. Okay, tip number six. <laughs> you always want to stitch from the widest part of the design to the narrowest part. Why? You're really trying to accurately place those stitches. And the best way to do that is to start with a base and then build off of it. So don't necessarily start at the bottom or the top of the design and work down or up. You want to start from that widest part and then work 
from there. It's very hard to accurately place your stitches if you're just stitching out there in, in just putting them out there, um, you know, in, in um, no man's land. So if you have that base and you're always um, placing them one next to one that is already there, then you will build the design accurately and that is your goal. Okay, tip number seven, go back and fill in any half space, any half stitches. And again, this is for the same reason. It can be really difficult to accurately place your half stitches as you're smocking along. If you go back after you've placed the whole stitches, you'll be able to see right where those half stitches need to go and you'll be able to fill them in very easily. Okay, step number eight, or tip number eight. Step back, keep looking at your design. Stop and step back from it to assess it, okay? It's very easy as you're focusing on getting a plump stitch to just kind of focus on the individual stitches and not see the overall design. When you step back, you can look and see, how is it looking? Am I creating any holes? Am I keeping all of my um, stitches horizontally? Is everything lining up vertically? You want to keep assessing that as you go along. Tip number nine. <laughs> no matter how good you're doing, you're probably going to end up with some areas where maybe some of that background is poking through. Don't panic and don't rip everything out. Just keep going. At the end, take your needle, thread it up with two strands of floss, and go back and fill in the holes. There is nothing wrong with doing that. The goal is to have a beautiful design when you're done. If that means that you need to fill in a little bit, go right ahead and fill in. And last but not least, tip number 10, it's very easy as you're um, making your design to kind of lose track of where you are as you're stitching. So make a copy of the graph. That is not a um, copyright violation if you're making a copy just for your own use. So make a copy of the graph you've purchased and mark as you're going along which row you're on <laughs> so um, you don't lose your place. You know, as you're smocking a picture smock design, you're often turning it upside down to smock back across the row. Again, and, and you're now reading things upside down. I lose my place all the time. So mark where you are and then follow it. Okay. If you are interested in um, more tips and tricks about smocking and um, sewing, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button. I do have um, another video that explains how to get started smocking if you're interested and, and don't know about that. So I will link to that. Um, there are tons of um, videos on smocking so make sure to check out the smocking playlist and I hope to see you again soon. Happy smocking!